All right, guys, just a couple quick ideas about um, what's called angular momentum. Um, so, well, one way that, that you can give something angular momentum is just to set it to spinning like this. Um, we've got something that has a moment of inertia that has some angular velocity, it's rotating. Um, and what's called the angular momentum of this thing, um, we'll say points um, into, the, into the wheel, the way that it's spinning. We use a right-hand rule, so it points in the same direction as the angular velocity of this thing, or this way, right? If something were to be rotating the other way, like this, um, then we would say that it has angular momentum that points out at you. Um, so that just removes any ambiguity. Then we're not saying clockwise or counterclockwise based upon like which side we're standing on. Um, we can just simply say that the angular momentum points that way for this spinning thing, right? So a um, couple quick notes about this. Um, so first of all, a big, a big thing to remember is you, you already know about uh, linear momentum. It's always nice to kind of go back to the linear thing because you'll see there's just an analog with the rotational uh, quantity. So linear momentum we call P, um, and that's just mass times velocity, right? Well, if we want to go to the rotational version of that or what's called angular momentum, um, that the character that's used for that is traditionally called L. I can't remember the history with that. I have to look it up. But what you can see is you just want to use the rotational version of these quantities. So the rotational version of mass is what we've been working with a lot lately. It's called the moment of inertia. Um, so that's resistance to linear acceleration, and that's resistance to angular acceleration, the moment of inertia. Um, and then instead of linear velocity, we're going to use that angular velocity. So um, if something's spinning and it has a moment of inertia, it's got uh, angular momentum. So the very simplest system again as usual we'll start with just kind of a point mass uh, go, going around in a circle and if we if we kind of start with this just for a, a point mass um, well really for any object the angular momentum is, is I omega um, but what we can do is see that well for a point mass if you remember the moment of inertia is mr squared um, so instead of I'll write it underneath um, Instead of I, let's write that then as M times R squared. Um, and then omega, well, that's just the angular velocity, and we can relate that to the linear velocity by V equals R omega. Um, so what we'll do again is make that, we'll make that substitution, that omega then is V over R. So we'll just put V over R. And so what you get then for this thing, uh, a point mass then going in a circle like this, um, it's just going to be mv times r, right? You notice one of the r's cancel, so you're just so you're basically left with the linear momentum times the um, radius. So you notice this thing would actually have more angular momentum if it were like farther out. Um, so same mass, same speed, let's say, but just move it farther out, then it's going to have even more um, uh, what's called angular momentum. Um, so this is going to be for like a point mass moving in a circle. Okay, um, I'll say point mass in a, in a circle, right? Um, so let's just kind of develop this a little bit more. Um, so I'm just gonna move down a bit. So it turns out something can also have, have or not have angular momentum if it's just moving in a straight line. It doesn't actually have to be traveling in like a circular path. Um, you may have good instincts about this, but we'll see. So say here is a certain um, location or axis, and we want to know how much angular momentum this thing has about it. Um, you might guess that uh, this thing actually has no angular momentum at all, as it turns out. It's just going straight away from an axis around this point. There's no sense of a rotation. It's just going away. Um, there's no, yeah, there, and so in this case, the um, angular momentum is zero. One way to see this is if you were at the viewpoint of this axis, you could say, well, angular momentum is I omega. Well, clearly, there's, I mean, this is mr squared, but there's no omega, right? So it'd be like I times zero, right? There's no angular velocity. You wouldn't have to avert your eyes to, you know, different angles as you watch this thing go away. Um, so this thing has no um, uh, angular momentum at all. By the way, let's, let's get the units. Um, Moment of inertia is, is like mr squared kilograms times meter squared. 
And then um, omega is like radians per second. Radians are basically unitless, so it's like per second. Um, right, so I don't want to be misleading. Just this per second comes from this part. Um, so kilogram meter squared per second is the units for angular momentum. Um, this one, as it turns out, does have angular momentum. And the deal is that, oh, I meant for this to be V here, because we have to show that it's traveling at a certain speed. And what's going on here, this, this is kind of similar to this one in a way, the thing's just moving in a straight line. What's happening is part of the motion is directly toward the axis. I guess we could call this like V parallel. And that's not doing anything for us, that's just heading straight toward the axis. So of course what we want is like V perp. So you can either draw it there, I guess over here. Um, so that would be like V perp. And you know, that that's our guy. This is the thing that's actually leading to the angular momentum here. The, um, the sense of rotation for this thing, I know it's not going in a circle, but there's still kind of a sense of flow or rotation this way around the axis. So you'd say the angular momentum points like into the page. And so what we would do then is say, well, our, our angular momentum then um, isn't just MVR as we found above, but actually MVR perp. Um, right, so you need to peel off, um, or excuse me, I can write it like this. Let's say V perp R. I'm, I'm peeling off the, um, the part of the velocity that's perpendicular to, the, um, to this, this distance R. Um, equivalently, as you as you might see, um, you can also get it by. Um, so I should do it this way too. I'm going to say, or you could actually extend the line of the um, the motion, and then this would be like r perp. You'd find the um, you'd find the closest, the shortest distance between the axis and the line of the velocity. Um, so you could also write it like this: m v r perp. By the way, whenever you see this kind of thing where you're peeling off um, uh, perpendicular components, you can tell that a, a cross product is coming and we'll, we'll get there um, pretty soon. Um, but just wanted you to see that. So something can have a um, angular momentum if it's moving in a straight line and it just has to not be moving directly at the axis. Um, so for instance, even this one above, moving straight away from the axis has no angular momentum. If we just shifted this thing down a little bit, um, then then there would be angular momentum because the line of the velocity would not go through that axis. And in fact, if we shifted this down a little bit, that would be like a, a sense of rotation like this. So the angular momentum would be out of the page if, if the thing were shifted down here. Um, if the thing were shifted up here, that would be more of a sense of rotation this way, then it would be into the page. Um, so this is how you find the angular momentum of a, of a point, like a point mass. Right. So one last thing that we'll do with this, and I, I kind of mentioned it a, a minute ago, is that um, there's kind of like a third way to see this, which is using a, a cross product. And we'll um, so another way to do this. Um, I guess I'll just write all three of the the these things up here, so you could have uh, L equals. Well, we already did um, like m v perp r. Right. Or you could say uh, MVR perp. And what you would do again is use a right hand rule to get the direction. Um, or you can do um, R cross P. So R cross P or R cross MV. So you notice you get the R MV um, uh, built out of this. So these are the three. This is the most formal like definition of angular momentum like in all its glory. Um, honestly, I usually use the, these representations though. They're, they're just kind of simpler, but they're really all the same thing. Um, so let's just mess with this just a hair. It says, uh, just put an example on it. It says, consider an object, uh, two kilogram mass. Okay, so I'll, I'll just write two kgs right there. There it is. It moves with a velocity of four i hat plus zero j hat. So it's basically going this way. There's your velocity vector. Um, and it's going uh, four, you know, four meters per second. So here's the the velocity vector is like four zero zero, and then the um, for the heck of it, we can get the since the mass is two, we can also just get the momentum vector of it. Momentum's mass times velocity, so the momentum linear momentum 
is just really 2 times the velocity vector. So this would be like 8, 0, 0. And what we're supposed to do here is get the angular momentum around this point. Okay. Um, so first it says here, sketch the object, well there it is, and it's velocity, momentum, and position vectors on the axes. So there's the velocity vector, there's the momentum, I guess we should get the position vector. Um, here's the position vector, which is like go over 2 and up 4. Um, so this is your r vector, um, which would be like 2, 4, 0. Uh, I'm going to run out of room there. Oh, yuck. Let me put it up here. R vector is 2, 4, 0. Uh, over 2, up 4, out 0. There we go. So, so there's the vectors. Um, so what we're supposed to do here with uh, next is actually just get the angular momentum of this thing. Um, so there's a couple ways to do it. Well, the way that you saw earlier was would, would basically be or one way to see it. The simplest way, honestly, in, in a case like this, would be this version. If you do MVR perp, so let, let's suppose we figure out the angular momentum that way. So we'd say, okay, L is MVR perp. Um, and by the way, we can get the direction. Here's the axis. So the sense of rotation should be like into the page. Um, it's gonna be into page um, by right hand rule, RHR, right? But let's calculate it. So uh, we have m is 2, uh, the velocity is 4, and then the r perp, right? Well, here's the velocity vector. So this isn't really the, um, the distance that you want to use. If the thing's traveling this way, it's only like the perpendicular part. So it would only be, it would only be the distance from the axis like up to here. So this would be like your r perp. Okay, and you can tell that it's four. Okay, so your R perp is going to be four units. Um, so it looks like we have uh, two times sixteen, or we've got a uh, thirty-two, um, and then into the page. Um, so if you remember the units, we can cobble together the units here: uh, kilogram uh, meter per second times meter, so meter squared over second, and then it's going to be into the page. So we could say, for example, that it's in the minus k hat direction. It's like negative z into the page, right? So that's, that's the simplest way to do it, but I did want to introduce this um, cross product way of doing it, where you take the r vector and cross into v, r cross, or excuse me, r cross p. You can see that's going to go into the page and agree with what we found. Um, so let's just quick calculate um, r cross p, right? You probably got room down there. Sorry, guys, I got to erase this. But let's keep in mind that our answer was 32 uh, kilogram meter squared per second and into the page. And let's calculate it with R cross P real quick. So here we go. So angular momentum is also supposed to be R cross P. So we go, we're doing cross product. So I hat, J hat, K hat. Um, R vector, the order matters. So do that one first, two, four, zero. Two, four, zero. And then we've got to do P. So this is eight, zero, zero. Eight, zero, zero. Okay, and that equals. Um, you start in the upper left. We're gonna, it's called expanding by minors, right, to evaluate this determinant. So you say I hat. And then you go, you cross out the row in the column, right, and you go four times zero minus zero times zero. Just for the sake of notes, I'll write it. Although I, many of you maybe it's beneath you to write all this, but you, whatever. There's no so there's no i hat component. Um, remember you, you alternate signs. So we do, okay, cool. We did the i hat part. Now we're into j hat. You got to oscillate signs minus j hat. Cover the row in the column. Two times zero minus eight times zero. Two times zero minus eight times zero. So nothing in the j-hat. We kind of knew that because it's supposed to go in the k-hat direction. So we go plus k-hat. This should be our guy. Um, 2 times 0. Well, sorry, cover the row in the column. 2 times 0 minus 8 times 4. 2 times 0 minus 8 times 4. And then lo and behold, all that when the smoke clears gives you a minus 32 k-hat, which agrees with what we, you know, what we found before. So 
Um, so that's using the cross product to get the, the angular momentum, right? Realize if the axis were up here instead, like so what we did was we found the, moment, the angular momentum around that axis. If the axis were right here, it would have no angular momentum because it'd be going directly away from the axis. Also then, if the axis were up here, the r vector and the p vector would be parallel. Well then, there's no angular momentum then because the cross product of r and p would then be zero. But if the r vector is like this, then r cross p, it does have a cross product into the page. Oh. So that's the angular momentum of a, of a point mask.